So remember not that long ago, Warner Brothers Discovery did the you know shocking news and somewhat controversial that they started pulling a bunch of shows down off of HBO Max. And that got some people upset and whatever, but the basic explanation was fairly simple. They were basically saying it was costing them more to keep that content on HBO Max than money or finances that it brought in, that they were actually losing money keeping that up there. So they got rid of those shows and had some, you know, people upset. But we talked about this at the time. We said, you know what, they're not going to be the only ones to do this. You know, as long as these contracts exist where people are getting paid as long as these pieces of content are up on these streaming services, HBO Max won't be the last ones to pull some content down. And they're not. Apparently, add to that list Disney Plus and Hulu, where it's been announced a deadline that they are now pulling down on Disney Plus and Hulu over 50 shows and movies, 50 pieces of content that they are pulling down right now as a cost-saving measure. This comes from the folks at Deadline who write the following. Uh, Disney is starting to pull content from streaming with dozens of series and specials uh, slated to leave Disney Plus and Hulu on May 26th. So like next week, uh, Deadline has learned the titles which are being removed from Disney Plus streaming services globally include Disney's own Willow that just came out, a big shot, Turner and Hoots, The Mighty Ducks, Game Changers, Just Beyond, Diary of a Future President, The Mysterious Benedict Society, and The World According to Jeff Goldblum, and Hulu's Why the Last Man, Dollface, The Hot Zone, Maggie Pistol, and Little Demon. Uh, the move, which comes with a content impairment charge of $1.5 to $1.8 billion, was announced during the recent Disney earnings call on May 10th. All right, so we are now seeing, we saw it was HBO, we said it probably wasn't going to be, the, there won't be the only one. And now we've got arguably the biggest company in entertainment, Disney Plus and Hulu pulling these shows down. And the response to it came fairly quickly. I believe the showrunner for Why the Last Man, Eliza Clark, I believe it was Why the Last Man that she's a showrunner for. She quickly got on Twitter and she said the following. She said this, well, you work on something for years, pour your heart and soul into it, as do hundreds of other artists. You make it during a global pandemic, far from home, then it's canceled before it even has a chance to finish airing, and then it disappears. And, I mean, listen, your heart goes out to, to people and creators who make this stuff, and they achieve a dream, and all that kind of wonderful good, you know, feel happy in your heart kind of thoughts, and then it just gets taken down and disappears. And listen, they're not the only ones, because a lot of shows are on this list. Look at this list here. Uh, Big Shot, Turner and Hooch, Mysterious Society, Mighty Ducks, which I'll, I'm not going to lie to you. I never saw one episode. I, I never even understood why they made Mighty Ducks, but whatever. Willow's the big one because, I mean, they put a lot of promotion into, we're doing this Willow. Like they said in the tweet, this show, I believe, got canceled before it even finished airing, and now it's just being taken down altogether. Uh, Diary of Future President, uh, Marvel's Voices Rising, the music of Wanda Forever, which I never knew existed. Why the Last Man is another one that came with a lot of fanfare. I mean, people had waited years and years and years to get a adaptation of the incredible Brian K. Vaughn uh, graphic novel. They didn't do a great job making it. It ended up being a bit disappointed. It's going away. Uh, the premise, love and time of uh, best in show. Uh, let's see what other the quest Rosaline cheaper by the dozen, the remake, the one and only star girl is coming down, which I remember I was at D 23 a few years ago when they made a big deal out of that. The Princess Art Encore, and just on and on. Black Beauty's disappearing. Be Our Chef is disappearing. Um, I actually kind of liked Be Our Chef. I really did. Be Our Chef was cute. I, I thought it was quite cute. But anyway, but apparently nobody watched it. Mm. And I get it. Listen, I completely understand. When you are have something and it's costing you more money than it's making you, and it's just sitting there sucking up money, then you make the decision to to remove it. And listen, it's possible that a lot of this content could find home someplace else at some point. Maybe yes, maybe no. I, I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, Chris, as an actor, somebody on the creative artist side of these things, you see all these big shows are disappearing. What's your first thought? It's devastating. It's absolutely devastating because then your show no longer exists now because that's the state of media right now. And I, I'm going to channel Robert Meyer Burnett. Mm -hmm. This is why physical media does still matter because we live in a time now 
where shows that are created solely for streaming, once they're taken off these platforms, no longer exist anywhere. So if you love a show, you really, really need to get the physical media of it because it might not exist shortly after it started airing. The other thing that comes to mind to me here, too, is I know back when we were talking about HBO's situation uh, on CNBC, they were saying they had a source that said this saves us tens of millions of dollars. And the source didn't want to be named because, you know, they're a source and finances are private. Well, that seems to be the real big issue with so many of these things when it comes to streaming. <laughs> Our finances are so private, we can't talk to you about how algorithms work, how residuals should work, et cetera. And of course, this will save people thousands of dollars, billions of dollars, because they don't have to pay the writers, actors, anyone involved residuals for a show that no longer airs. So when I see stories like this, I completely understand their math and their logic. But as an actor, it definitely leaves a bad taste in my mouth. You know what I wonder about? I think... You know, for a lot of TV shows, like you can go to onto Apple TV and you can buy episodes of shows yeah. if you don't have that thing. Now, people are, were, I got some questions this morning, like, are those going to disappear, those too? I don't think so because the, the licenses and the contracts are different for those types of services where, listen, I only have to pay, let's say Chris made a, made a little mini movie and I put it up on my, my video service where people can buy it, right? Or rent it. Mm -hmm. I don't, in that arrangement, unlike a streaming service, I don't have to pay Chris just for it being there on my service. I only have to pay Chris when somebody buys it or rents it. So I only have to pay money when I'm making money. Mm -hmm. But on a streaming services, those contracts are different. Money is owed whether anybody watches it or not. So I, I hope that some of these shows here either already exist or will exist on services like that. Same. So that if people do want to watch them in the future, there is an avenue for them to do so. But yeah, if you're a creator or an artist, like I'm thinking about shows like Why the Last Man or Willow or stuff like that, I completely understand why it'd be devastating. This is one of those situations where I get it from both sides. Like nobody wants to spend money when you're not getting anything for it. Nobody wants to have their creative endeavors just disappear. It's kind of a sucky situation. We want to thank a sponsor of this video, Mint Mobile. From the gas pump to the grocery store, your utility bills and favorite streaming services, inflation is everywhere. Seriously, make it stop. Thankfully, there's one company out there that's giving you a much needed break. It's Mint Mobile. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just $15 a month. You guys know that ever since I switched to Mint Mobile, I've been saving almost 70% a month over my my old phone plan. For people looking for extra savings this year, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just $15 a month. By going online only and eliminating the traditional cost of retail, Mint Mobile passes the significant savings on to you. All of their plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash campia. That's mintmobile.com slash campia. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia. Question is for you guys. What do you think about this? I, I, I personally don't really watch any of the things that were on this List. I mean, I Jeff tried Goldblum watching one. Willow. What's that? What about the world according to Jeff Goldblum? Yeah, Jeff, Go Jeff Goldblum, I did. That's but charming I, as I admit I kind of gave up on it after the first season, <gasps> even though I liked the first season. Oh. Yeah. And then I didn't really watch anything else. Poor what about you guys? Is there a bunch of things on this list that you like to watch? Do you kind of get it from the artist side? Do you get it from the business side? Whatever you guys think about this, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Hey guys, thanks for checking out our video. Make sure you like and subscribe to our channel here. And also, if you want to hear our full daily show, go and subscribe to our podcast, The John Campus Show Podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or your favorite podcasting app of choice.